I've been slowly adding more and more devices and sensors to my home automation setup, and it's gotten to a stage where I now have a pretty significant number of apps on my phone and iPad. I've also been wanting to set up automations and routines between devices, but the interfacing across platforms and between brands isn't usually there, always buggy at best. If you've done anything home automation related on a Raspberry Pi, then you've probably heard of Home Assistant. It's a free and open source software package that's designed to be a central hub or control system for all of your smart home devices, and it's got a pretty substantial online community working on integration. So for example, it allows you to do things you wouldn't normally be able to do, like use an IKEA motion sensor to turn on a Philips Hue light bulb, something that isn't supported by either ecosystem individually. So today I'm going to be installing Home Assistant onto a Raspberry Pi, and I'm going to use this new laser cutter, the Atomstack X20 Pro, to laser cut a housing for it so that I can put it somewhere convenient in my house, without it looking like a jumble of wires, dongles and PCBs. The X20 Pro is a new diode laser engraving and cutting machine from Atomstack, and it uses a clever quad diode laser module to deliver 20 watts of optical power. The laser is so powerful that they claim that it can even cut 0.05mm sheet metal, which as far as I can tell is a first for consumer level diode lasers. They also say that it can cut up to 12mm sheets of wood in a single pass, and up to 8mm sheets of opaque acrylic. The 20 watt laser module is quite a bit stockier than the one on the X7. The control PCB and cooling fan are built into the metal housing, and an air port at the top feeds down to a nozzle around the lens for the included air assist system. I really like how well the air assist system is integrated into the design of the module, and it doesn't look like it was an afterthought. The included air assist is their own branded system. I've used an industrial aquarium pump previously on my K40 laser cutter, so I was expecting this to be something along those lines, but it's actually a lot better. The unit apparently uses a two-cylinder compressor to deliver 10 to 25 litres per minute of air to improve cutting and engraving quality and speed. We'll take a look at how it works in a bit. At a little over $1000, it does carry quite a hefty price tag, so I'm hoping that this machine can do some cutting that's at least equivalent to most entry level 40 watt CO2 lasers. So let's get it assembled. As with the X7 model, the X20 comes largely pre-assembled, so assembly is pretty straightforward. There are a couple of pages for assembly in the manual, and the components are labelled for each step, so they've made it really easy. The gantry is all pre-assembled, so you mainly just need to assemble the four-sided frame, and then mount the gantry and bolts onto it along with the laser module. The only fiddly job is feeding the bolts through the gantry wheels and tooth pulley on either side. It took me about 20 minutes to assemble the X20 Pro, and to adjust the legs so that it sat perfectly flat on my desk. I then tried turning it on, particularly to try the air assist pump and to see how loud it would be. I have to say I was pleasantly surprised. As I said earlier, I've used an industrial aquarium pump in the past, and that's basically as loud as a standard workshop compressor. This thing is substantially quieter in comparison. It makes quite a noise if you turn the power all the way up, but you probably don't need to use it at more than half power for most applications. You can feel a decent amount of air coming out the nozzle at half speed, and at this speed you'll hardly hear it over the fan on the actual laser module. Even at full speed, it's quiet enough that you'll be able to talk over it, and you don't feel like you need hearing protection when it's running. It's not exactly something you're going to want to leave running unnecessarily, but it is bearable. If we plug in the included microSD card, there are two test files ready to go, one to cut and one to engrave. So let's try those out first. I'm going to get it moved to my workshop so I don't burn a hole in my desk. The first file is a dog cutout that was labelled to be used with 2mm plywood. I've only got 3mm plywood, so I thought I might need to do a second pass to cut all the way through. I used the offline controller to position the laser and run the test cutting file. I also used the included distance tool to set the focus distance between the laser and the wood first.
The laser seemed to cope just fine with the 3mm plywood and made quick work of the dog, cutting through the sheets in a single pass. I then tried the engraving, and that too produced a great quality finish with the air assist on about 30% power. So it looks like it's ready to take on a project, and we need to design housing to hold our Raspberry Pi, so let's get that done. I've sketched up a cubic style housing with some feet on it to lift the power off the shelf or desk, and a fan on the top for cooling. I wanted to integrate the Home Assistant logo into the design in some way, so I initially planned on engraving it, but that made the housing look a bit too much like an ordinary box. So I decided to rather laser cut the logo out on each side, and I can then glue some clear acrylic or clear plastic sheets onto the inside of the case to keep the dust out. The RGB lighting on the fan should light up the inside of the case just enough to give the logo a bit of a glow, which will hopefully look quite good. Let's get the components cut out on the Atomstack X20 Pro. I'm going to be cutting the components from the same sheets of 3mm plywood. I'm cutting at 300mm per minute and 90% power, and I've prepared the files in Laser Gerbil. The first piece came out perfectly, and you can really see how the air assist system has helped to keep the smoke away from the plywood. I started without it for the first USB-C port cutout, and you can see it's surrounded by smoke stains and charring. I then turned the air assist on to about 30% power, and the rest of the cuts are really clean on the surface. One thing that's a bit of an issue with all of these diode lasers is that there's no smoke extraction system, and cutting wood produces a lot of smoke, so you will need to work in a well-ventilated area. Just as a test, I tried a piece of 6mm plywood that I had lying around. I set the laser to 200mm per minute and 100% power, and it had no problem cutting this either. This is the cut in real time. Now that we got the pieces cut out, let's glue them together and give the housing a light sand. I'm just going to use regular PVA wood glue to glue it together, and I'll then leave it to dry for a few hours before sanding it. I used a couple of strips of masking tape to hold the sides together while the glue dried. I'm going to paint the housing with two coats of white universal undercoat, and then two colour coats. I couldn't find the exact colour of the Home Assistant logo, but this is about as close as I could find, so I'm going to try it out and see what it looks like. After a second coat it's starting to look pretty good. I just want to fill in the edges a bit more and it'll then be done. Atomstack have also added an app on the software side. This allows you to quickly import and engrave or cut shapes and images wirelessly. Let's try using the app to add some text to our housing. I'm going to quickly sketch my name and then engrave it onto the lid. Now let's get our pie and fan installed in the housing. I've intentionally left a bit of headroom in the top, so that there's enough space to add shields, adapters and devices onto the GPIO pins in future. The pie is held in place with some M2.5 brass standoffs, that are secured with a nut each on the bottom. The pie is then secured to them with an M2.5 screw into each. For the fan, I'm going to use a 40mm RGB fan to light up the inside of the case, and I'm going to use a small black dust screen between it and the plywood. 
Like I've done previously, I'm going to press an M3 nut into each pocket in the fan and I'll then screw it into the lid with an M3 by 8mm screw. I'm going to flash the Home Assistant image onto a 32GB SanDisk Ultra Micro SD card. I'm going to stick some clear acrylic panels onto the inside of the case so that the dust can't get in around the logo cutouts. They'll also provide a bit of support to the thin branches on the logo so that they're less likely to break off. If you don't have acrylic you can also use some clear plastic sheets or even old containers with clear flat sides. I'm gluing these in place with hot melt glue in four spots along the edges. Now we just need to plug the fan into the 5V and ground GPO pins and we can then close up the housing. There are two main low power communication protocols used by smart home devices. These are Zigbee and Z-Wave. They're both mesh networks, meaning that every device on the network connects to every other device in range of it, and they then dynamically cooperate with each other to send data between the nodes in the most efficient way. I don't really have a preference between the two, but most of the devices I've got so far operate on the Zigbee standard. So rather than have my Home Assistant hub have to talk to each hub from each manufacturer in order to communicate with the devices and sensors, I'm going to add a Zigbee gateway to the Home Assistant hub so that it can communicate with them directly. This will also allow me to use third-party Zigbee devices and sensors that don't have hubs or aren't part of other ecosystems, so they're generally going to be cheaper. The gateway I'm going to be using is this little USB adapter called a CONB2. This seems to be the most well-supported by Home Assistant. Ideally, I'd like to use one that uses the GPIO pins on my Pi so that I can keep it within the housing. So if you know of any that use the Pi's GPIO pins and work well with Home Assistant, please let me know in the comment section. That's basically it, we're now ready to start using our new Home Assistant Hub to control our smart home devices. So let's get it booted up. Once set up, you can scan your network to find all your compatible smart home devices, and then start building dashboards, automations and routines to control them. You can access your dashboards through any web browser on your network, so you can take control of your home through your laptop, tablet and mobile phone, or even build your own dedicated control terminal with another Raspberry Pi and touch display. Check out Smart Home Solver's channel for some great ideas for home automation routines and automations. He's got some really creative and unique ideas using a wide range of sensors and devices. Using Home Assistant, I've now got the motion sensor on my driveway camera to brighten my porch light for a minute when it's on during the evening. And it'll even turn it on for a minute at night if it's off. Next I'm going to be setting up some motion sensors or magnetic switches to turn on my pantry and closet lights when the doors are open. The Atomstack X20 Pro is without a doubt the best diode laser machine that I've ever personally used. The powerful laser allows you to work with thicker materials and is even useful for thinner ones as well, as I'm able to cut 3mm plywood 3-4 to four times faster than I would with a 5 watt laser. So I'm saving a lot of time with it and it's actually becoming a worthwhile alternative to my CO2 laser at this point. The air assist system also works really well to get cleaner cuts and engravings and it won't leave your eardrums ringing after you've used it. Finally, the inclusion of Wi-Fi in a phone app means that you've got another way to easily use the X20, streamlining your workflow. Let me know what you think of the Atomstack X20 Pro in the comment section below. Also let me know if you've used Home Assistant for your home automation and what interesting devices and automations you've set up. 
Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials, and reviews.